So, you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. You got your list out? <laughs> you actually think I wrote it. That's cute. You, yeah, of, <laughs> of course you didn't. I didn't either. Let's go. Okay. Hi, welcome back to the third ever episode of Young and Terrified. I'm your host, Kati Somayan, and today our guest, our humble guest, <laughs> is my friend Gabby. Hi, Gabby. Well, hello there. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like the proper intro. <laughs> How have your past uh, 24 hours been? Introspective. <laughs> uh, elaborate. Um, as about like teenagers you can get, I went to Denny's yesterday. <laughs> That's and then hung out in a room for like six hours. That's about as teenage as you can get, in my opinion. That <laughs> that sounds like part of, like a John Hughes. If John Hughes <laughs> were to direct a movie set in the twenty tens, I feel that would be uh, that would have to at least be a scene in it. That'd be um, like the, uh, a a motif, a reoccurring theme in the movie. <laughs> Denny's and rooms. Oh my god. How broad. Denny's and rooms. So, uh, to be entirely honest, we've been speaking for 30 minutes before we start recording today. And just uh, some, some things that came up were pretty interesting. And, and we had to stop ourselves. We had to. It was. We actually had to cap it because we were just, we were just talking about the stream of consciousness and like <laughs> ruining yeah. what we could have used for the podcast. My biggest fear is that we end up talking like the whole podcast. We just end up doing the whole podcast and then realize, oh, we have to record now. Whoops. Oh. <laughs> and then like it doesn't feel natural. So Yeah, that's what we were talking about. But like the um, we had brought up points from the past podcast with David and we were like, I really want to talk about this. And then we start talking about it in real life. And we were like, we got to cap it. Because if not, if we bring it up in the podcast, it's going to sound super forced. Yeah. So what were some things that you came up from the podcast? <clears throat> Your last podcast with David? Yeah. Um, I really like you guys' bits about like canon stuff in films and movies and whatnot. Because I have a lot of opinions. Um, and also, um, well, just what we were talking about before. Like when we were just sitting here waiting for the, the mics to turn on and stuff. The um, the stuff about culture and philosophy, and yeah, and exactly what about the whole canon argument? Because I okay. actually want to go into like more of that. But, but pre- I'm prefacing this with the fact that I have a really bad habit of having opinions on both sides of the, both sides of the argument. Mm-hmm. Like I'm because I, I I like to think I know basically nothing and then pre- pretend like I know everything. Mm-hmm. It's a very bad habit yeah, of mine. Yeah. So um, I will have like half the facts from both sides and then create opinions for both of those sides so that regardless of where I am like I never know where I actually am because I fall on both ends but in in terms of like um canon stuff I think it's it, it, using JK Rowling as, as a an example like when she just tweets stuff and then tacks stuff onto the characters I, I I think it's kind of unfair because most of the stuff that she tacks on is like inclusive stuff stuff where she's like oh these characters were actually blankety blankety blank blank and then that that kind of creates some like um it's like something inclusive to add to the characters, but it's it's not fair really because you don't get the actual representation in the actual media, and then just saying that the blank character is blank, there's there, there's no substance to it. It's just mm-hmm. like this character is this because I said so afterwards. Yeah, and I feel anything that isn't within published works is just as canon as fanfic. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um. I, I feel I can very see how that would be. That. Yeah, but also like at this like at the same time, I don't think it's fair. And like I could see your point about fan fiction, but also I want to give authors and creators like full like ownership over the work that they can mm. they can manipulate mm-hmm. however they want, even after the fact. I feel mm-hmm. like that's fair too. But I like I don't know. Yeah. I'm kind of in a gray area with that. But I I do think it's it's unfair to to give like the the most minimal representation or or a uh, character trait mm. to a person and then have like don't actually put in, you know, any of the work into showing yeah. how this character is like that. Yeah. I think it's really unfair. I think I feel like that with um 2 days ago I saw 
um, Love Never Dies, which is basically the sequel musical to Phantom of the Opera, which a sequel musical is unheard of. <laughs> yes, you so tell me about this. I, I, I'm, on the one hand, I'm surprised that not other, like, other musicals haven't done sequel musicals, but then I realized with them watching this, like, there's there's a reason why because uh, there's basically uh, how the musical is set it's 10 years after the events of phantom of the opera and just while watching the musical i'm like this can't be ca- this can't be canon this can because there are so many like i was reading about phantom earlier so i can refresh my memory and i'm like because yeah, i don't remember how it ended like it's um it and phantom ends i don't know if i want to i'm not gonna say it don't say I'm it. not gonna say it. I'm not gonna spoil it. Um, it's just, <sighs> just that's also the thing. Like, oh, uh, what we were talking about before. We were talking about before, like, um, sometimes additions to <sighs> media is just not. Like, I, I refuse everybody, to believe Everybody, like, with movies, I think it's different, though, because mm-hmm. people people make sequels in it. Like, it's like, it's like, accepted. Like, oh, it's a money grab, you know? It's accepted that people that's want to continue. Be, yeah. People want to, if, if the movie does good, people want to continue the story. And a lot of times, they're not up to par, but it's, like, people don't want to, like, they leave it open, usually the first movie, so that they can make a sequel. And um, I feel like it's more accepted in movies, like... Even if the sequel's bad, you still, you know, you accept that it's a part of the story. In um, yeah. in books, I, I, I also think it's accepted, but it depends. Like, if it's a book that you've left alone and you didn't intend for it to be... <laughs> Harper Lee! Ooh, that's exactly what we're talking about. If you didn't intend for it to be uh, added on to, we'll say... It should not be added on to. Like, oh, it depends, obviously. There's obviously a lot of variables that can go into it. But with Harper Lee, Harper Lee wrote To Kill a Mockingbird, which is, to this day, one of my favorite books in the world. It is my mother's favorite book. It is my favorite book. I got it as a present for my 13th birthday. It is a, a, a near and dear to my heart. Mm. Harper Lee wrote a sequel, which I cannot remember the name of. Something The Watchman, I think. Go Set the Watchman. Go Set the Watchman. Um, I had... I have not read it. I have not read anything about it. But my mother informs me that it has destroyed one of her favorite characters. Like, destroyed one of her favorite And uh, she obviously she didn't read it either. She read snippets of it. And she was like, I cannot bring myself to read this. Because I have loved and loved and loved this character for so many years. That the thought of having some, like... Also, like, you can't say no to the author's word, which I also think is kind of whatever. But, like, to have irreparable damage be done to your character, it's heartbreaking. It's absolutely heartbreaking. Like, it's... uh, I don't know. I don't know. I just... I don't think it should be added on to if you didn't intend for it. And if it is added on to, don't... I think Harper Lee's intention was to shock the audience, maybe? Yeah. But, like, okay, so in the book, Atticus is, like... um, He's a lawyer, and he's defending... A, a, a black man who's one of my favorite scenes yes. in any book. So it was such a beautiful book, and according to my mother, don't fact, don't quote me on this, um, but like apparently Atticus is like in a in a KKK meeting or something. Like it's it, it's such a like a, a complete wait. What? Yeah, it's such a complete. Um, like I, I had to register what you're saying for yeah, a second because yeah. that made absolutely no sense. Like I don't like don't quote me on that because it's hearsay by my mother. <laughs> But even if it, even if that's not the case, like oh, people God. do do that. They do a complete one eighty on a character that you set like it's such you set so solidly in the first part. Why, like I, obviously for that specific circumstance, if it's true, it's like I I I firmly believe that she's just trying to shock people, mm. which is so disappointing, so disappointing. But it it just don't have. I can't tell you what to do with your own creations, but why would you do that to a character that means and it's and it's an iconic character? People, yeah, quote yeah, him. yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, it's just I don't know. It, yeah. It's it's pretty disappointing to hear. Yeah, can deciding what something's canon or not? That's yeah. it's it's a it's a very messy, messy, messy ballpark. Okay, so um, something else I would like to talk about with you, and you feel. To be mer- very near and dear to your heart. Oh, dear. I think I know what it is. So, Brockhampton. Okay. 
Let's go. So. I'm, I'm like, okay, because um, we were talking the day that the tickets came out for their incoming tour. Mm-hmm. They're like, Brock Kansas went on tour. I'm like, I have not I heard one thing. bought them immediately. I was in mass. I was in church. And I whipped my phone out. All right. And I bought the tickets right there and then on my phone. Which, okay, irrelevant. Point is, um... Brockhampton is a um, music group. They define they are a boy band. They define themselves as a boy, band, which is a misleading title in some cases. They are they rap. They're uh, some people call them a rap. They don't like to be known as a rap collective. But you know, but think what? Odd Future. There you go. Okay. But they define themselves as a boy band because they're a bunch of boys in a band. So they <sighs> are, to my knowledge, they are still stationed in Los Angeles, California. And um, in a house in South Central. Um, <laughs> yeah, just just let's just write out their whole address. <laughs> hey, hey, they do their music videos in front of their house. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you do, if you do videos in front of your house, I think if someone finds oh, your address, also they're in South Central, so nobody wants to go there. In their yeah. document, they have a documentary on Viceland. It's phenomenal. Um, they have a documentary on Viceland. In their last, like second to last episode of the documentary, um, there is a part. Where you hear a drive-by happen, like gunshots, no. car, gunshots, tire screech, oh, police sirens, all in no. one, and everybody in the house just kind of like they look outside the windows. They're like, "Oh man, I didn't want this to happen." While the cameras rolled, and they lock the doors, <laughs> lock the doors, lock the windows, and then get back to doing music because they live in South Central, and like they're not allowed to wear red because the blood. Like it's just, you know, <laughs> nobody's gonna go to their house. Okay, <laughs> just nobody's gonna go to their house. Um, and they're but okay anyway so they are there's like way too many people in the group there is far i actually okay but the reason okay there's like 15 people but the reason the reason there's not everybody is included in the songs the reason there's 15 people is because they include their mcs their web designers their like they include everybody oh okay so everybody who is somehow has touched brockhampton is in brockhampton kind of so Kevin Abstract, Amir Van, Don McLennan, um, Bareface, Matt Champion, Merlin Wood, I don't give Ajoba, up. Joba, Joba. Keep going. I think that's, no one's stopping you. I think that's I'm so I'm so probably missing somebody right now. Ooh. But those are the ones that I can remember that's that Oof. do most like Kevin's on every single track that I can think of except for Heat. Which is the 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 first one of saturation? Okay, mm. so they have two. They have three albums out right now. They have All American Trash, Saturation, Saturation Two, Saturation Three is coming out in December. They pump out music constantly. They are. I mean, so okay, if there's like, okay, fifteen, and then like, let's say thirteen of them are actually on the track. <laughs> there's not. Like, they, at any, yeah, like at, how many? At any given time. Okay, so for I think one of my favorite songs that they have is Junkie. Um, the fir- it starts with Kevin, his verse, and then Amir's verse. Yeah. I love Junkie. Junkie's a good it's song. Such a good song. Uh, it starts with Kevin's verse, then it goes into Amir's verse, and then um, Merlin's verse. Uh, Joba does like a hook thing. Uh, Matt's verse, and then Dom's verse. So there's six people on that song, but it doesn't feel like not every- like it doesn't feel like six people. It does not. Um, and then there's other songs like Star, where it's only three of them. It's um. It's Dom, Amir, and Kevin. All three of them are on the song. Okay, so I don't listen to that much rap music. My music taste has devolved very quickly um, since I've been in high school. For some, I don't know why. Um, so I don't listen to that much rap, but or hip hop, I should say. Um, but they are incredible. They have, they honestly, their their album Saturation Saturation Two, probably my favorite album of the year. And they dropped both of them in the same summer. They did. Wow. Yes. Okay. Wow. That's. I mean, That's actually, crazy. I something I think is really cool though is that like, you who like, you don't listen to a lot of rap music, but everyone just does. Like I don't even listen. to... I think because I listen to very select artists. Like I listen to Logic and I listen to Rich Chiga, Kanye, and like that's. Basically, I recall it. from last episode, you really want to pick apart his brain, which I want to pick apart Kevin Abstract's brain so bad. Okay, so Kevin Abstract <laughs> is a he is a twenty something year old gay black kid. Okay, and that's 
what he writes about. That's 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 his. He's super super open about that in his songs and his verse in Junkie is very telling. Um, yeah, and Amir, who Amir, they both met in high school. So, uh, Kevin and Amir, and then the rest of them, they met on a forum about Kanye. They yeah. met online. I feel that, like, at least in this decade, at least in the 2010s, raps, rap has connected people yes, as a genre. Yes. And I feel... they're really. I think they really bring back the group mindset of hip-hop. They're so innovative. Like, none of their... Their songs have a familiar element all throughout, but they sound so... Like, they have a song called Face, and they have a song called Heat. Heat is a very... It's the first album... It's the first song off uh, Saturation. It is super angry. It's super in your face. It's like... The, the lyrics are super violent. And then Face is like towards the end of the album. And it's super soft. There's no, um, there's no like heavy instrumental um, or heavy like bass or whatever. It's super uh, peaceful. And it's, it's a sad song. And it's like such the antithesis of the beginning of the they're in the same album and they sound so different and they also have a song called lamb which they refuse to put on an album which i am mad about everybody keeps tweeting kevin saying put it on an album and he has not yet um and that album that song is basically like these are my friends it has like a single verse in it and it's just mm. repeated a bunch the song's only like two minutes but it's like i love my friends i love my family that's you <laughs> that's you yes. oh, it's hard to describe you as a, oh, as a phrase, it would be, I love my friends. I have this habit. Oh, I, okay. <laughs> Just, okay. Um, I have this habit where I love telling my friends how much I love them. Like, all the time. I don't dispute it. <laughs> I'm not disputing it. I'm like, just saying that's you. Got the, I don't know when it was, but I think I just, um, I have a, if I feel like it, if I'm really like, oh my god, I need them to know, I will send my friends whole paragraphs of me just saying, I love you so much. You are so important to my life. You bring, like, whatever. I make it very personal to them. I'm just like, please take it. Please. I want, you have a piece of my heart, and I want you to know that. I love my friends so much. And I think to contrast uh, Rockhampton, but not really, but kind of, uh, another part of pop culture music, popular music today, is um, the artist Dodie Clark, in which we you are that you're wearing. You're, <laughs> I am wearing. I was just wearing today. a shirt. It was very reminiscent of this artist that I was going to tell you when when yeah. I kind of got here. By the way, quick thing, last thing about Brockhampton. Listen to them. Do yourself a favor. Listen to them. <laughs> just watch the video. Their videos are so. I don't cool know too. if you're talking to me or you you're too. talking to everybody. You too. I made you a playlist, and you haven't listened to. Actually, I queued up some songs for you, but. Just listen to their, look at their videos. Kevin is a genius when it comes to, like, film. He's a great director. Um, they're so passionate about their music. It's so good. Just listen to it. Everybody in the everybody who's listening, I will, I will mention it to everybody until the day I die. Just do yourself a favor. Listen to Brockhampton. Please. I'm going to their concert in January. I'm going to die. I feel it. I'm literally going to die. Um Anyways. But Doty. Yeah. Who is, I think, the complete contrast to... Uh, not Rodney. necessarily. Uh, like, not, not not necessarily, but like... Isn't that strange that not necessarily? Yeah, because we live in a day... We live in a day and time that everything is kind of at a crossroads. So you have electronic music, and then you have um, alternative music, which is Doty. And then you have rap music just kind of converging in and this And I think it's way. also super cool that, like, past music is still pretty prevalent. Yeah. Like, I don't know what it is, but lately I've just been listening to, like, exclusive 50s music. Yes! Like, the, the soft rock music is... I'm, I love yes. it. It's just so good. Um, it's a sound that's being picked up now, for yeah, sure. Yeah, which I... Like, I think it's more remnant. Like, I, th- I think soft rock is becoming... Like, in, in terms of modern day, like, dream pop. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Um, Dodi is a... <laughs> I think Dodi's a super interesting artist in that, like... She, she... She... She has a song for every occasion. Yes. Which I think is super... I, I, I... Not to be personal. Not to get personal. But I fell out of touch with a friend a while ago. And it was, this is pretty disheartening. And she had a song called I Knew You Once, which is... A kicker, <laughs> yes. But like it it's is. it's 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 comforting. As sad as it made me at the time, it's very comforting to have like songs that are so what I'm feeling right now. Yeah, like and obviously that's true for every artist. But like 
Specifically Dodie. Specifically Dodie. She's very yeah. good at that. Yeah, like there's okay, like there's, she's just continue. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so like there's like fun songs like in the middle yes. and like absolutely smitten where if you're like Those oh, are fun song. peppy songs. And then she has like songs like um intertwined where when she breaks down the lyrics, they're super like wow. Like it yeah, gets, and then like you. then like in the in between those two, you have the song "You," yes, which I was is about like to bring that up. Which her, uh, her, okay, so she she usually does songs on YouTube, but she keep recently came out with an EP. She has two EPs now. Um, she has a song called "You" that she did on YouTube, where on YouTube it's very like not sorrowful, but like slowed down kind of you know the tempo. It's it's a very like peaceful song. On her EP, she kind of like. Pepped it up. Yeah. She put some 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 cheerful, playful instrumental in there. Yeah. So you get very confused while listening to the lyrics. <laughs> and so- like the lyrics themselves are still not happy. Yeah. Uh same thing with uh Would You Be So Kind? It, like, yes. Because yes. she specifically says, it's like, oh, when I wrote this song, I yes, was Yes, if you check the description, she's like, in the song, I thought I was falling in love mutually, but I found out that it was very one-sided, and now it's actually, like, a genuine plea, because in the song, she's saying, would you be so kind, uh, kind but to fall in love with me? And um, in the be- in the beginning, she was like, I thought it was just, you know, fun thing to do. No, it's funny. <laughs> funny enough, she said she's turned its term back into... Did she really? Yeah. No, on her Snapchat, she said that, like, it's kind of, like, become kind of a weird mix of two. So, like, she doesn't know how to perform it because there's a certain way oh in God. which you can. So, it's... I also love that she has to, like, that the meaning is very, very important in how she performs. Yeah. I love that. I, it... Just... She has... Some people, like, I understand how some people wouldn't like her overall aesthetic because it's very, like... Some people... Uh, I don't know. Some people are very, like, off-put off by that. Um, but I think she's phenomenal. She's so phenomenal. And she's so, something I love about her so much is that her YouTube itself, she's so open about. Yes. And, and she, like, she recently made a video about how she should stop being so, so open. Yeah, Um, yeah. Which I also thought was really cool. But she's very upfront about, like, she doesn't like the stigmatism around mental illness. So she's very upfront with how it affects her, how, um, how she lives with it, how, like, and it's very transparent Mm. um and she got she made a video afterwards about how she should stop being so transparent because at some point it was like it was too much like people people were actively not watching your content because they were sad afterwards or something to that degree which i also thought took a lot of um I'm going to say courage to upload that video because a lot of people have a hard time admitting when they did something wrong with good intentions, especially. Yes. And, like, also the self-awareness she has. Yes, yes. When um, uploading the type of thing, just thinking, like, oh, maybe not everyone can handle this. Yeah. So. It's very intense, like, if you've seen her her Snapchat stories and stuff. Um, but it's, it, I think it takes a lot for somebody to admit that they did something wrong, especially when they had good intentions in mind. And yeah. it, I, it's very admirable, I think. For her to upload a video like that. Okay, so we're gonna go take a break, get some housekeeping done, and we'll be right back. Hey guys, it's Kati Somayan, your humble podcast host, back at you with some housekeeping this week. First order of business, thank you guys a whole lot for your gratitude and your appreciation, all this fun stuff for the podcast. It really means a lot to me that you reached out and enjoyed this. And you know what's another way of reaching out to me? Huh, I wonder. It's Twitter. Yes, we have a Twitter. It's at Young and Terrified. So find us there. Tweet us. Talk to us. Look at the tweets. It, it's, it's fun, guys. It's a fun, fun time you can have on Twitter at Young and Terrified. Second order of business. We have a YouTube. If you're listening on iTunes, we have a YouTube. There you can like the podcast and you can subscribe. And if you click the little button, little little button thing that every YouTuber tells you to press so you can get notified for things, you can get notified for when the podcast comes out. Alternatively, if you're on YouTube, we have an iTunes. And if you subscribe, you can find out when we upload there. And you can rate the podcast, which is so, so, so important to iTunes analytics to make us get shown 
especially during the first three to four episodes, it's been seen that ratings really, really do help. So if you give us a cool rating, just imagine me high fiving you. Okay? Okay. Cool, cool, cool. And lastly, I would like to thank this week's guest, Gabby. She's wonderful and amazing, and I'm glad that she was on, and I'm glad that you're listening. So let's get back to that. Here we go. What was it you were saying to me? <laughs> okay, for the record, while we were on break, um, we realized we talked for way too long, and it's probably going to be edited oh, yeah. profusely. Oh, yeah. There, yeah. The, the first, like, the episodes in total are normally 25 minutes. The first part of our episode was 30 minutes. You know what? Everything can be fixed in editing. Yikes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey. Now I'd like to ask you a hypothetical question. Every episode I ask each guest or every episode I have one guest. <laughs> what am I talking about? Go on. Um, I'm nervous. Oh, yeah. Very. Oh, sweating. <laughs> uh, this is, we are far too gone. You know, too f- <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna correct myself. Not anymore. Not anymore. I just like clip the mic. Go on. <laughs> okay. So, if you could get a plane ticket to anywhere in the world, Ay, Dios mío. <laughs> <laughs> shut up. Okay. That's like my go-to phrase. That and a curse word that I'm not gonna say. A yeah. Spanish curse word. Yeah, it doesn't I'm matter a, if it's Spanish curse words. It's still a curse word. Because I am a um, 70-year-old Cuban grandmother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm turning into my abuela slowly. Anyway, continue. Yeah, so where would you want to go if you get a free plane ticket anywhere? And also, oh, yeah, you have, like, infinite money. So, like, <laughs> you're not, like, you're not, like, oh, Yikes. here you are. <laughs> no food for you. She's, uh, anywhere? Do you mean anywhere, like, I have to stay on Earth? No, I'm saying like anywhere. Oh, so like a teleportation different. ticket. Yes. Can it be a, a no? Okay. Um. Anywhere? I don't know. Okay. Um, can I teleport myself? Yes. <laughs> so can I teleport myself onto the the space space? <laughs> Because I think that's where I don't want to go. You you want to go to the International Space Station? Yes. <laughs> okay, well, can it be a fictional place? Uh, I, No, I think it needs to be... No, physical okay. locations. Okay. Physical locations, space station. Why? <laughs> what do you mean, why? No, no, because, like, okay, elaborate. <laughs> why would you want to go to the okay. International Space Station? Um... Practically, it will fall apart very quickly because um, I have nothing to contribute. And also, if they just see a rogue child <laughs> running around the space station, <laughs> not running, uh, just like floating, just, just floating like, around. Hey, um, I'm quick asphyxiating question. slowly. Please help. I did not think this through. Um, I'm just gonna show up in like a like a like a homemade spacesuit. I'm gonna be like, I have 30 seconds. Please help. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can imagine with like a fishbowl on your head. And it's like, actually, uh, yeah, space, 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 okay, space station. Um, probably, honest, practically, I will be escorted off the station very quickly because I have no skills that will contribute to the station at all. Oh, God. However, that was really loud. Uh, however, um, I really love space. <laughs> That's it. That's literally it. <laughs> That's my reasoning. I um, spend copious amount of time uh, just staring into the abyss for no reason. Um, Very really it's, cool. it's literally like I, I will literally spend four hours on the cold, sometimes wet grass and just stare into the night sky, as cliche as it sounds, for like four hours. We're just, just relatable teens. We're I'm just, just a relatable teen. Put me in a John Green novel. <laughs> just oh no. my god, John Green is new John Hughes, except Oof. except much John more Lainey. We haven't even got to the comedian. Oh, it's not gonna it's happen. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. We were talking about comedians before this. Back to space. So <laughs> I send. Um, no, never mind. Can I? No, no, you can't turn back now. Okay, we okay. don't have time. <laughs> but, um, it, no, never mind. It's not. It's not actually physically possible. <laughs> what? What would it be? Don't even say why. 
want to go to the ocean floor. Oh, good God. No, 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 no. I'm the stopping only thing, that. The only thing I love more than space is the ocean. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to s- stop right there. <laughs> can we? Do- okay. Yeah. We'll stop right there. Um, uh, I just, 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 space is like, i not kidding. I say goodnight to the moon every night. <laughs> can I tell you how lame that is? Like, that's so cringy. I hate that about myself, but I have to because she's beautiful and she's, you know. Washing over us. <laughs> no, uh, genuinely. But uh, for real though, I really love space. I love everything about space. I really love science. Like, I'm no good at it, but I science is my favorite thing in the whole world, man. I love science so much. Uh, science is good. Science everything is good. about science is so incredible. You just... Uh, science. Um, fun the science programs. Um, but just uh, space. I like space. I like everything about space. Okay, well... We're nearing up on the end of this podcast, oh. of this train, <laughs> like this ever-chugging train oh into oblivion. Um, and, Gabby, I would... <laughs> I'm so glad you came on. <laughs> this is... This is, like... This is so fun. Like, yeah. this is really this fun. Is, now you know why I do it. It's probably because I'm a narcissist, though. I just, like, hear myself talk. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, I'm like really sad. This is ending. Anyway, Man, it's it's okay. been really it's really been a pleasure to have you on. Yeah, it's been a pleasure being on. Oh, well, and before and is there anything you want to plug? Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna have random people follow me on Instagram, so no, nothing I want to plug. Okay, cool. Ah, listen <laughs> to Brockhampton. Do yourselves a favor. I'm gonna plug Brockhampton. <laughs> Uh, everybody, <laughs> Brockhampton did not pay for this. <laughs> we are not sponsored everybody by Brockhampton. Subscribe to Brockhampton's YouTube channel. Watch all of their videos. Go to their Twitter. Subscribe to uh, subscribe, follow the the Brockhampton Twitter, and then look at everybody that the Brockhampton Twitter follows, and then follow everybody there because that's everybody at Brockhampton. There you go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. But uh, to kind of uh, I don't know, play us out. I don't know how to say this. Well, just talk us out. Whatever. Uh, um, where do you see yourself 10, 20 years in the future? Wow. Okay. Um, I am 16. So in 10 years, I will be 26. In 20 years, I will be 36. That seems like an inconceivable number. Probably dead. Not in... in okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Not, not in like a... Not in like a... Um, uh, okay, um, not in like a I hate life kind of way. More in like a I don't know how to feasibly survive yeah, as a person. Once again, it's like one little, one of those things that's outside of it's outside human, of my comprehension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't comprehend being thirty six. Um, in terms of my ideal future, um, I will be in a relationship, hopefully. Um, which mm, cliche, but like. I want to be in one. Um, at 26, uh, I kind of want to be getting like a doctorate or something. Mm, that's really yeah, interesting. Probably in English, which is um, a dream career aside from astronaut. Um, I want to be an English teacher, but I also don't want to starve. Um, on a dark, uh, or, or the other career option that I would probably want to in the future. I know exactly what you're going to say. <laughs> Um, okay, well, I, I don't know how to say it. Not, I want to cut up dead bodies. I don't want to, <laughs> like, I don't know how to say it where it's not creepy. I have a um, worrying, let's say worrying, fascination with all things morbid. Um, like, the I, the reason that I listen to podcasts so, so much is because I have a top five favorite serial killers and got the recommended podcast that explores that. Um, I just, in the, <laughs> a career. Putting the blame on me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody listen to Lore. Everybody listen to the podcast Lore. It's phenomenal. Everyone anyway. listens to Lore already. It's fine. Shut up. <laughs> um, uh, career-wise, probably something like that. Like, I'd, I'd like to do the autopsies and stuff. I don't want to do, like, life. I don't want to be, like, a doctor, though, because I don't want to deal with life, people. It's too much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're making yourself seem worse and worse. Sorry. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Oh, continue. Um, and I don't know in a mo- I don't know I don't know if I'd be in Miami. I love Miami so much. I love most things about Miami. Um, but I don't know how long I, I I probably come back at some point. Yeah. But I can't see myself 
staying here. I'd, I'd like, I don't know, probably in a in another major city. Yeah. Um, I think coming into Miami, I th- I don't think I can do anything smaller than Miami. No, I don't think. Miami is the like, entire population, including like the metropolis, is like 5.5 million people. Yeah. It's a lot of, yeah. So it, I don't think I can do anything smaller than Miami. No. I don't know. I, I, I have a, I'm very comfortable. I've never been anywhere but Miami. So like I, I'm very comfortable in big cities. So probably somewhere in a big city. Mm. Um, with with uh, minimum three cats, minimum, minimum, and also minimum two dogs. Oh God, that's that's gonna be a fun time there for my allergies. <laughs> and you act like you're gonna be my roommate. Like I'm gonna I'll find bring, a way. You'll find a way. I'll find a way. You're gonna be my landlord. <laughs> I would not put that past you, being my landlord, because oh you'd probably advertise it so good, and I'd be like, oh my God, apartments for lease, yeah. <laughs> um. But I must have a pet. I it is a one hundred percent must. I have to have the very least a black cat. Well, it's it's been great. It's been fun. <laughs> it's the note we're ending on. <laughs> yes, this is the note we're ending on. So everyone, thanks for listening. Thanks, Gabby, for being on and uh hope you all have a great day. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Is that better? <laughs> I, oh, oh, I, get the microphone. I wish this was visual right now. I wish that your 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 listeners could see you just struggle out of that chair.